Hello, good, good evening, everyone. So welcome back to class. My name is Joseph Obashio David, and I'll be coordinating this class. I believe we have a, a very wonderful day, and uh, all our lectures for the day were revealing and insightful. We started this morning with a general introduction. Then uh, we had a professional overview of management. Then the emotional intelligence for professional was taken by a story, if you're my easy. Then professional HR fundamental was taken by Dr. Chief DK Naman. If you can hear me, please, I want you to type one one in the chat room. If you can hear me clearly, Chatu, please. Okay, if you can. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Binta Bamali. Thank you. All right. Uh, without taking much of our time, we want to. Can you hear me now? All right. Not very clear. Okay. If you can hear me clearly, please type one one. Okay. Thank you, Mister. Techno come on, see, is all right. Please check your other side, check your side. It could be from your side, it could be from your side. So without taking much of our time, we want to go into the next uh, lecture for the day. And it's an overview of health, safety, environment. By the grace of God, our facilitator is on ground and uh, is ready to do justice to it. Uh, before I introduce our facilitator, I want to echo our class rules. Please let's make sure as much as possible to put up our video. And of course, if you have any questions, you can raise your hands during question and answer to the call. Then you can also type in the chat room when we attend to them. So, our facilitator for Is uh, no Dr. Ebruche Banito. Daughter. Hello. All right. Um, thank you so much, you. Uh, Mr. David Oluwase, for that. I appreciate. Um, is it there is a noise coming from your background? Um, I'm going to mute everyone. Let me be sure where the noise is coming from. Okay, so I was hearing some noise from the background. I can't specifically say where it was coming from, but I had to mute everyone. So thank you so much, um, um, Mr. David, for that um, introduction. And thank you for taking out the time to help us in coordinating this program. And also thank you for having me this evening on this uh, platform. I want to welcome everyone back once again. And I trust everyone can hear me loud and clear. Please, if you can hear me loud and clear from your end, please, can you type one one in the chat room if you can hear me loud and clear. All right, thank you so much. I so much appreciate that you can hear me loud and clear. That makes um, the whole learning experience uh, this evening going to be worthwhile. Now, please, um, can some people here help us um, go to their individual um, um, class groups and help us tell them that class has started? so that uh, we can have everyone here. The class we are going to be dealing with is a very important one. Everything that we've been dealing with, they are very important as regards to general safety, uh, or sorry, general management course. Now for the sake of um, um, reiteration, um, we didn't um, emphasize in the morning how this um, class or how our programs go. So please, um, for the sake of, um, having enough information that could help you decide. I'm going to read out um, some things that will help you um, in deciding whether this program is for you or not. Or when it comes to what is expected of you, um, please note in each of the classes or in each of the courses, 
there is going to be grouping at the third week. So this is the first week. Um, uh, after next weekend, the next weekend, there is going to be grouping. Okay, and the grouping is not grouping you into your courses, but grouping you into teams to carry out certain projects, all right? And um, class participation is very, very important. We understand that there are quite a number of people who have done um, some of these courses we are taking again as a refresher course, not that you're coming for certificates, you just came to refresh your mind. Please feel free to make your own contributions also as part of um, the things you've experienced in the practice, okay? So class participation is very, very important. And group assignment is also very, very important. So group assignment, uh, class participation, there are, uh, and um, please note, um, there is going to be presentations as well. So after we are broken down into smaller groups, each of the group um, is made up of maximum uh, six to 10 persons per group. That's if your class is quite big, uh, maximum 10 persons, um, six persons in most cases, and three persons. Now, if um, you have um, 10 persons or less, please note that there is uh, uh, presentations. So each group is going to work on a certain project and they are going to present, whether you're doing HAC, PMP or HRM. Okay, that's very, very important. And this is only applicable to those who are going for the, the certification. So you must meet all requirements before certifications. All right. Okay. Um, I don't know. There were questions that were raised in some of the chat room, and the questions were like um, um, paying for material separately, paying for um, um, exam separately, and paying for certificate separately. Uh, please, if you have all the money to pay once, there is no need to break them down, right? That's for those who are interested in certification. If you're not interested in certification, please always be reminded that this training is 100% free and you can learn and build your capacity to it. If you want to go for certification, then you have to think of paying for your study materials, uh, paying for your examination and paying for your, your certification. Now, why we broke it down the way we did is to allow for ease of uh, payment. But if you have all the money to pay at once, please, nobody's going to stop you. Okay, nobody's going to stop you. Now, this question had been answered severally, but I will still answer it again. You can run two, three courses at the same time, only if you, in this case, only if you're not going to be completely present in all the classes. Maybe some you do it um, as a, while you're on break, you, you have to go and visit YouTube and do the others that you missed. And while others are sleeping, uh, maybe during your spare time at work, you can be viewing the YouTube versions of the ones you missed. But the, the whole classes will be running concurrently. Then what that means is that you, might, you won't be able to have all the live classes at once. But if you wish to learn through um, recorded video classes, it is possible. I, I guess what I'm saying is understandable. If you want to take all the classes, you want to be live in all the classes, that might not be possible because all the classes will be running concurrently. So you can't be in PMP, HAC, and HRM at the same time. Even if you happen to have three devices that can connect at uh, the same time to all of them, you won't get to understand all at the same time. So if you wish to do two programs at the same time, maybe one will have to be a self-study where you have to use the um, other, uh, the YouTube platform after classes have been recorded and you can then download and go through it in your own time. All right. Okay, so these are some of the things I needed to, to uh, bring to our notice. Um, All classes are to be coordinated through Zoom and streamed through YouTube. So if you want to, if, if you're viewing through YouTube, you might not be able to ask questions. Um, we only see your comment after the classes are uh, over and um, you might not be able to take attendance from YouTube. So if you're viewing from YouTube, 
please always endeavor to send us a private chat that you view from YouTube and then you'll be able to get the attendance and we should be able to um, see your participation from YouTube before we send such to you, okay? All right, so I think I can um, continue um, with my class right now. So we are going to be looking at, uh, um, we are going to be looking at um, introduction to environment and uh, health and safety. Environment, health and safety management or health, safety and environment management. Um, if you've never paid attention to health and safety as regards to the workplace before now, by the advent of um, the COVID-19, everyone by default had become safety conscious by default. So we were all asked to go and do remote working because of single th a single reason, because we wanted to ensure safety, okay? If you want to do any event today, you, you have to meet certain safety rules and regulations. You want to start, uh, you want to go to church, you meet some safety rules and regulations. You want to go to mosque, you meet some safety rules and regulations. In your house, you meet some safety rules and regulation as um, a product of what the COVID-19 has brought to us today. Now, so I could categorically say that the COVID-19, um, the COVID, I'm, I'm seeing somebody say there is an echo in the background. Please, if you're hearing an echo from my background, please, can you kindly identify um, if, if there is an echo in my background, please um, do let me know. Someone said there is an echo. Okay, echo like a breeze. Okay, so it's possibly. Uh, all right, just give me a second. Uh, I will find out where it's coming from. Just give me a second, I'll be back. Okay, please help me confirm if the echo like an ocean wave is still there. Please, is the echo like an ocean wave still there? Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Ahmed Shaibu. Please, if it's still there, let me know. All right, thank you so much for, for guiding me so that I don't blow like an ocean wave. All right, thank you so much. I also want to use this time to appreciate deeply um, some of our members who are here or some of our trainees who uh, are here, thank you so much for always coming around, irrespective of the fact that they are done with their courses, but they always want to come around. Director Mike Adeyemi, thank you so much for coming around. Um, Ishmael Kuma Kwame, thank you so much for coming around. Um, and every other person, both the ones I'm seeing and the ones I'm not seeing, thank you so much. For Abbas Akali, thank you so much uh, for coming around. Um, Tena Banabas, thank you so much for coming around. Um, it's always good to have all of us come together. Michael Okafo, thank you so much for coming around. It's always good to have our old members or our members come on board whenever trainings are taking place like this. It has a way of encouraging us, uh, we that are on the facilitating end. Thank you so much for being a very great encouragement to us. We sincerely appreciate that. All right, so um, uh, coming back to what we are talking about, health, safety, and environment management. And I was trying to bring the scenario of what COVID-19 has done, all right? So it has made everyone safety conscious. Uh, in Abuja, as it were now, you can barely enter any office without a face mask. Uh, a good population of people in Abuja now walk around with their small uh, sanitizers by their pocket. So mistakenly, they should greet you. They quickly apply a sanitizer and get it off. 
Now, people consciously, consciously, they walk by the road and see where there is water dispensing and they, they quickly go wash their hands, okay? Having in mind that, okay, maybe I could have greeted someone, I could have touched something uh, that could, could have been contaminated by COVID-19. So you see how um, COVID-19 had made the consciousness of safety very, very eminent in us. All right, so we are all now safety professionals by default, okay? We are, wait, is there anyone here that doesn't have, or let's say from between April and now, you've never used a face mask. You've never used sanitizer. Uh, you've never withheld shake, handshaking between, Feb, uh, between uh, April, I'm, I'm talking of those of us in Nigeria, or uh, maybe those of us in Ghana as well. Between April and now, you've never used sanitizer. Uh, you've never used face mask. You've never withdrew from shaking hands as often as. You've never withdrew from hugging as often as. You've been going to your religious places as you used to. If you've, if you've been having such experience, please type one one. You've been doing everything as normal. You've never used a face mask. You've, you've always been going to church since the time uh government lockdown and all of that you've been doing everything as normal please can you type one one in the chat room if you've ever okay <laughs> those typing zero zero are indicating that they've never all right so if we've not really even even those that went to shrine or those that you shrine they at a point they were not going to their shrine as often I may not have known them, but I'm definite that they did not go. If, except the Ashana were to be in their house. If the Ashana were to be outside of their house, I'm sure sometime they will have to, um, they will have to um, stop going to the shrine. All right, I'm seeing, can you share your screen, please? Please, if you can see my screen, um, introduction to inf environment, um, health and safety management. Please, if you can see my screen type one, one, if you can see my screen type one, one. Okay, so I've not moved any screen yet. When I move the screen, you will see the screen. All right, thank you so much. All right, so we've been defaultly uh, become safety professionals, safety professionals. Okay, safety professionals. So, it, it, and like someone typed in the chat room, it has become the new normal. Okay, it has become the new normal. Uh, every bank today has uh, a sanitizer. Every uh, government parastata today has a sanitizer. Every place that is going to be a major event or there had been major events, you see sanitizers there, you see people selling face masks uh, around there. Okay, in every other day, if you open, if you open YouTube, if you open Facebook, if you open uh, the television, if you open newspaper, there is always a health and safety information that is passed to us um, uh, as consigning the new consciousness of uh, what we have in the environment today, all right? And then I would like to share this uh, simple uh, experience I had. I think I, I, I became a, a, a certified safety professional uh, from the uh, International Institute of Risk and Safety Management UK in 2012, October 2012. Uh, that was when I had my induction, all right? And uh, one of the days, I think it was in 2013, I went to buy a projector from a UK store in Abuja. And uh, I was, having my ID card, my safety ID card, I, I, I was unaware of the fact that it was dangling up and down and somebody was seeing it. And uh, in the place I went to buy the, the projector, um, someone there saw me, a, a UK citizen that was inside the store saw me and read the, read the, um, the ID. And he asked me a question. He said, are you a safety professional? I said, yes. He said, ah, so there are safety professionals in Nigeria. I said, why not? We are many. He said, wow. So if there are safety professionals in Nigeria, why is it that there are liters of, um, of sachet water everywhere in the country? 
and I couldn't answer that question. I don't know whether you get what I just said now. Did you, did you get the scenario I just painted now? The man asked me a question. He said, if you are, or if there are safety professionals in Nigeria, why is it that there are sachets of pure water leather everywhere in the country, including Abuja? And I, I couldn't answer that question. So in essence, we have been conscious of the certification and not being conscious of the practice. We have been conscious of the learning and not being conscious of understanding the practice of the learning. I don't think there is any, any state you go to in my country that you don't get to have some parts that are very, very uh, polluted, either polluted by such uh, leather displays or some other non-biodegradables that constantly cause um, issues to the environment. Now, some time ago, um, I was I was uh, I was uh, reading a safety report regarding to my country, and the safety report was exemplifying why um, some some um, aquatic organisms or some aquatic life have gone into extinction in my country. And that report was only centered around uh, Lagos, okay? And the report says that Lagos produces, I, I may not be able to specify exactly the number of tons, uh, thousands of tons of um, carbon monoxide, okay, that, that uh, leg, only Lagos produce, only Lagos eh, produce. And if you agree with me, Lagos also has most of the, major water bodies in Nigeria, where we have seaports and all of that. Lagos has most of the major uh, sea bodies or water bodies in Nigeria. Now, what happens is that this carbon monoxide, they get to settle on the water uh, uh, bodies. And what does it do? It increases, it, it reacts with the water to form what we call carbonic acid. And the carbonic acid increases the acid content of the water, result, leading the, um, uh, the, the water bodies or resulting to having acid water instead of the um, alkaline water on the water bodies. And this has gone in a very great depth in reducing the existence of certain um, 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 aquatic lives within uh, my country. Now, I don't really know about your country. I don't really know um, about um, um, how gas emissions are being managed. Uh, I don't know how uh, uh, burning is being managed. I don't know how wastes are being disposed, perhaps in your own house. Okay, I don't know how, um, um, how careful we are about certain hazards that we don't even recognize that they are hazards. Now I'm going to um, ask a question here. And after the question, I will share another scenario that happened to me while I was in Lagos. How many of us here have experienced or has experienced a case where you are traveling uh, on a major road and all of a sudden you see someone extend his hand from the car and threw away a banana peel? If you've ever experienced such before, you've seen such before, please can you type one one in the chat room? You are traveling and all of a sudden you see someone dis dispose banana peel on the highway. Okay, how many of us have also experienced people eating um, peanuts or granite and from the car they dispose it with not minding the consequences of what it can lead to? If we've all experienced that before, we also see people uh, from the comfort of their homes. And uh, now, now, okay, this, this, is, this is very, very interesting. How many of us have experienced this um, attitude of those living upstairs throwing water over the, uh, uh, to, to the other side? Like they just throw water, they don't mind 
who is downstairs or who is crossing doesn't consign them. If you've ever experienced such before, please type two two in the chat room. You've seen people throw away water irrespective of the kind of water they just throw it off, and it can actually wet someone, be it domestic water or what have you. So we've all had this kind of experiences before. Now let's come to the workplace. I think I just have um, two hours. Um, to, is it two hours? Yes. So I uh, will be rounding up any moment. I, I've taken 30 minutes already. So I just have a um, few minutes left. Okay, let, now let's get to the workplace. Let's get to the workplace. Commonly, uh, how many of us have seen uh, those kind of um, um, things we have uh, in the workplace where there is no designated uh, place where there is a, where there is, there is no designated place for waste management. You've ever had the, the the experience in starting an organization? Maybe you went to to you went into an organization and all of a sudden you discovered that you had to dispose the waste and you're looking for where to dispose it and you can't find it. You can't just find it and you ask them where where is your waste disposal? And somebody tells you uh, just give it to me or somebody tells you throw it anywhere. If you've ever had such an experience before, also type two two in the chat room so that we get to have all of this. Okay, so all of these experiences are common to us. Okay, they are all common to us, all right? And all of these things are part of the things we are considering in the health, safety, and environment, okay? Now, let me ask a question because when I, when I ask some of my questions, it seems as though I'm taking time, but I'm actually, covering my class because those things are the things that make, the questions are the things that make up the content of my class. I want to ask again, how many of us here, uh, our organizations have well um, defined plans on managing stress? You have, your organization has well defined plan on managing stress or managing risk on managing hazards and all of that, your organization has well-defined plans of managing those things. So you know what to do part time as regards to safety. Okay, if you if you if your organization has such, type one one. If your organization doesn't have such, please type zero zero. Well-defined plans on 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 stress management. Well-defined plans on on risk management. Well-defined plans on fire management. Well-defined plans on safety aid management well-defined plans on um, um, crisis management, emergency response, and all of that. So if we look at uh, all of this, we find that not every organization is prepared for health and safety matters in our organization, okay? Not every organization has uh, well-defined plans on health and safety matters, okay? So that makes it very, very important that we'll have to pay attention to understanding what safety is. And there is one statement we're making safety. Safety is a personal responsibility, all right? Nobody is responsible for your safety. You are the number one person responsible for your safety. So you must, uh, first of all, understand uh, what could be the possible threats and dangers and hazards that could uh, affect your safety and then um, be able to uh, bring, bring uh, a mitigation or a control to those things that you've identified. All right, so having uh, laid the foundation to this, let me quickly uh, run through this. Um, so whether you are a safety professional, project management professional or HR management, safety is everybody's concern. Okay, safety is everybody's concern. Safety is everybody's concern. So in this class, we are going to look at the, uh, explain what environmental health and safety management is all about. Then we'll look at the objectives of, um, um, EHS management, describe the aspects, and then look at considerations for EHS inspections. Then we'll look at types of EHS management plan. Then we'll look at elements of EHS management, then types of EHS inspection, then strategies for EHS management, then EHS management process. And then um, we'll look at ways of uh, effective EHS um, program. All right, um, I want to get your consent to something. If you'd like me to increase my speed like very fast um, so that we can be able to cover all, please can you help me say yes in the chat room? 
you want me to increase my speed to be fast enough so that I can cover within the next one hour, um, please let me know. Um, I'm seeing yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Okay, it's like the yes have it. The yes have it. Somebody said this speed is okay. So I want to increase the speed so that we can cover more. Somebody said no. Okay, so let's see how we can cover. So let's start with the first one. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat room and uh, feel free to interact. I'm, I'm going to actually stop earlier so that we ask questions because uh, to me, that's more of where the learning is. So let's quickly look at uh, this uh, case study at, uh, at uh, Rayon Polymers Incorporation and find out how safety can play a major role in industry and in business. Um, Rayon Polymers Incorporated is a leading manufacturer of molded plastic containers. Rayon sources the raw materials from various vendors in the form of polymer pellets. It then melts the pellets and molds them into various plastic containers of different shapes and sizes. Rayon is a market leader in its industry due to high quality and finish of each product. Rayon decides to expand further and opens a new plant in a new location. Within a month of operation, there were nine incidents of injuries to different workers reported from the new plant. Rayon's management decides to investigate and look into the matter and find the cause of such large number of injuries. A team of environment and safety management experts headed by Peter Atkins is sent to the new plant. They need to investigate and submit a report of its findings and possible solution to the problem. Peter comes back to the management with a detailed report of his findings and how the problem can be solved. Some of Peter's findings were eyes and walkways are blocked by stacked cartons of materials leading to risk of um, trips and falls. Um, hazardous chemicals used in the manufacturing processes uh, are kept uh, unmarked and uh, in unsafe area of the plant. Some of, um, okay, workers do not follow general safety rules, such as wearing proper protection equipment and, sh and shop floor rules. Uh, workers, supervisors, and managers are unaware of general safety uh, or general environment and safety practices to be followed. Management is shocked to find that the causes of injuries to workers are normal day-to-day -day safety precautions that need to be taken care of. These safety precautions were ignored by the workers and their supervisors and managers. Uh, as per Peter's suggestion, the management decides to conduct a special environment and safety focus week for all personnel. In this week, the employees working at the new plant are made aware of the importance of following environmental and personal safety rules. They are also made aware of the norms of environment and safety that they, uh, that they should never breach at any time. After a month of the training being conducted, all starts going well at the new plant. You understand that, um, you can understand that environment and safety management policies are crucial to organization. That's from the case study we've shown. So with that, now let's look at what we have um, in our slides. Please, I will need you to follow me uh, gently. Um, I will not rush like um, some people say yes, some people say no. Um, so I will not rush. Environment and safety management principles can be applied in office as well as industrial settings to develop a safer, healthier, and more productive work environment. So if they should ask you the question of why do we need to have HSE principles or EHS principles and practices and systems in organization, the answer is simple. We want to have a safer, healthier, and productive work environment. That's all we want to do. So we are all looking at reducing injuries, reducing incidences, reducing um, uh, possibilities of near misses and accidents, uh, reducing the possibilities of stress, reducing the uh, possibilities of uh, negative risks that could result to things like fire outbreaks and that could result to shocks and um, maybe fainting and um, things that will require first aid and then will not start having recordable injuries and all of that. We, we want to reduce the frequency of, of risks of unsafe acts and unsafe conditions in the workplace. That's what we want to do, all right? And that's very, very important. So as a safety professional, 
your 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 work is very simple. Uh, now remember, as I'm, I'm as I'm talking as a safety professional, I'm talking to us all as potential safety professionals. So whether you are here as a, as a HR practitioner or as a project practitioner or as a, as a safety practitioner itself, um, we are all safety practitioners um, by common sense, all right? So our responsibility is to reduce uh, or eliminate the possibilities of injuries, reduce or eliminate the possibilities of accidents reduce or eliminate the possibility of negative risks. All right, these are very, very important. Employees and employers need to know how to minimize risk factors by choosing the best tools and work techniques for a given task. Please note, note the specificity of the second statement. Employees and uh, employers need to know how to minimize risk factors. That's how we need to, um, know how to minimize the things that are causing risks. How do we do that? By choosing the best tools and work techniques for a given task. Now, now that makes, uh, that's, that sentence could be like a very simple English, but let me make it a little understandable. The best tools and best techniques, safety-based tools and techniques that could be used in uh, for a tailor in a bank will not be the same best tools and techniques that will be used by an engineer on site, maybe a civil site or an electric, electrical site, might not be the best tool for a medical doctor in the, in the surgery room or surgical room, might not be the best for the chemical engineer in his laboratory. So at all times, our concern is to understand um, our work requirements. And that's why for those of us that are doing project management, safety is very, very important for you. For those of us that are taking project management course, safety, understanding safety practices is very, very important for you, okay? And also those of us that are doing HR, understanding um, occupational safety, because occupational safety is one of the basic areas we are going to be dealing with. Understanding industrial and occupational safety is very, very important. So at all times, we must, first of all, understand the scope, the, the scope of the operations, the scope of the tasks, surrounding our businesses. Then we now know the kind of uh, um, uh, personal protective equipment or the kind of best safety tools and best safety um, techniques we are going to use. Okay, so let me ask a question. Uh, let me ask a question. Um, if you were to work as a teller now in this present condition that we are, what will be your best uh, safety tools? Okay, what will be your best safety tools? Now, if you were to be a an engineer on site, let's say a civil engineer on site, what would be your best safety tools? Please write for one. If you're an engineer, if you choose to write for an engineer, what would be your best safety tools? And if you are uh, a teller in a bank or say you're a banker generally, what would be your best safety tools? Let me get your response in the chat room. I will appreciate that. Why that is coming in? Um, um, let's look at the objectives. So someone says, uh, wear gloves as a teller. All right, wear safety gloves, teller mask, face shield and nose mask. I think it would be good, we, we, okay. We specify the ones we're writing for. Like someone says, safety boots for engineers. I love that. Uh, safety helmet and boots for engineers. Me for medical, face mask, gloves and eye goggle. As engineer, as an engineer, use helmet is important. For teller, use mask, Apro apron for tellers. Gloves and teller for bankers. As engineer, personal protective equipment. Please, can you specify the PPEs? As engineer, helmet, safety boots, eye goggle. Okay. Now, I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question. Is there any any kind of sa safety protective equipment that a banker can use that if a an engineer on site uses it, it might not protect him against the risks? Is there a kind of safety tool? that or, or safety uh, protective equipment that if a banker used it, he or she will be well, he, he or she will be okay. But if, a, if an engineer uses such in his site, it will be as though he's not really protected. Could there be anything like that? Okay, so someone says shoot. Okay, that's good. So as a banker, shoot is part of your PPE. And I love that, that's a very great one, shoot. 
as part of your PPE as a banker, whether you believe it or yes. Now, if a, if a civil engineer goes to site and start wearing suits, ah, there will be fire on the mountain. In fact, that suit can become a hazard to him on site. Now, let's also say, someone says uh, apron, which also is good. If a banker wears apron, it's okay by him. But if a, 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 an engineer goes to site to go and start wearing those light apron, that could become a risk to him. Now, an engineer can wear a safety boot, a steel safety boot on site. But if a banker gets to wear such in the bank, there'll be issue. The person won't be able to, to, to work well. Or maybe the person start wearing a, a safety lanyard in the bank or wearing safety uh, belts in the bank. Ah, let, let me let me for ask you, let's assume you just went to your bank on Monday morning and uh, the person you saw as a teller is looking like the engineer on site that is doing your house. And the person tells you to give him your money to deposit. Tell me, will you, at first instance, what would be your reaction? The person on, on the teller now is looking like the engineer that is working on your site. Eh? How will you react? Okay, someone says scammer. Another one says engineer can wear over rubber, banker, no, okay. So scammers, wrong hand, fear. Okay, so you see, that, that justifies the statement, um, the number second statement here, that employees and employers need to know how to minimize risk factors by choosing the best tools and work techniques for a given task. Um, how many of us remember uh, how those, uh, I, I've never seen any of them, but I, I, I see them on television. I see them on paper. Those treating COVID patients and those treating um, Lassa fever, Ebola and the like. You, you see how they dress, right? You see the kind of PPEs they put on. They cover from their hair to their toe. You, you cannot see anything, all right? They cover virtually everything. Now, imagine your engineer comes to you, the engineer on your site. You just went to your site tomorrow, and you're looking for engineer. Somebody appeared in that, in that format. <laughs> okay, someone said, it's Hamsad suit. Okay, so someone now appeared in Hamsad suit. I asked the person, who are you? He says, your engineer. I said, what are you doing? He says he's protecting himself against COVID over the site. How will you feel? <laughs> By default, whether you like it or not, there is this sense of, um, there, there is this emotional um, feeling you will just, that will come to you. It will run like, is it fear or what? But if you used to shake the person before and you see the person in this format, natively you will just be like, I shouldn't shake this person now. If the person is coming close, you'll be drawing back because you want to also save yourself. You don't know what is happening with the person. You feel like the person has gone nuts, but the person could actually feel like he's doing the right thing. So when we have, when we use the wrong PPEs at the wrong places or the wrong workplaces, we feel odd. We don't appeal to customers and we can lose customers by doing so. All right. So that this second statement is more than just a statement. Okay. It's it's more than just a statement. Someone say 50, 50 yard gap. You give the person 50 yard gap. Another one says, it's hilarious. <laughs> and now I say, he's not ready for work. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you sure you know what you are here for? Okay. So these are some of the responses we can give. So let's look at the main objectives of um, um, environment and health, uh, environment, health and safety management. Please note whether it is HSC management, whether it's SHE management or EHS management, please note is the same thing. Different organizations call it different things. So number one, to control events and prevent escalation. Very, very important. To control events and prevent escalation. As uh, a safety officer too, emotional intelligence is key to how you operate. Emotional intelligence is key to how you operate. In fact, to us in the safety profession, Emotional intelligence is a very major tool, is a very good tool in managing um, the escalation of crisis, in managing the escalation of emergencies. 
So if you're not emotional intelligent, you won't be able to work well in the safety department. So every safety professional by default should continuously work on their emotional intelligence as part of the basic requirement to function effectively in the safety department. Now, secondly, to minimize the effect on people in a property and environment. Whenever we talk about safety, please, I will need you to write this down. There are four, um, four uh, things that are affected in every safety situation. Four of them can all be affected, or one, two, three, or less than two, or less than three, or less than four could be affected. But there are four things that could always be affected, uh, or that be the consequences of every safety event. Uh, we have people, we have environment, we have access, and we have reputation. Enver uh, people, environment, access, and reputation. In, a, in an acronym, we call it PEAR. PEAR, P-E-A-R, PEAR. So when we carry out EHS management, we want to minimize the effect of um, uh, risk factors on people, on properties, on environment, and also on the reputation, be it as individuals or as an organization. Then the next one there is effective rehabilitation of affected people. This is also importance of EHS, um, EHS management. They will have the aspect of EHS management, the aspects. So what are the basic aspects of um, health and safety management? Uh, we'll have the work area, we'll have the tools, we'll have the environment, and we'll have the work techniques and habits. So quickly, let's look at each one and what it has to say. For the work area, work area need to be arranged for optimum efficiency of task performance. Consider the base of support, and then place equipment and materials where appropriate. Now, um, in HSE, there is a class we are going to look at that we call ergonomics. Ergonomics. Ergonomics is a is is a science of how the work area should be well managed, including how the equipment in certain work areas should be designed. All right. So every work area should be arranged for optimum efficiency of task performance. There could be, okay, like the, 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 the case study we just looked at. The reason why there were accidents were things that could have been managed, things that could have been handled. Uh, and some of the issues identified there were trips and falls and slips. Some of the things that can, or one of the major things that can cause slips, trips and falls are uh, uh, bad housekeeping or poor housekeeping, it can lead to slip trips and falls. Uh, bad housekeeping could be attitudes of spillage of water, spillage of oil, uh, um, uh, poor arrangement of tools and equipment in the workplace. And those things can be very, very taunting. Permit me to do a little digression. Permit me to do a little digression. Um, this is a personal bias, please. Don't feel bad if it affects you, but it's a personal bias. Uh, do you know most marriages have uh, collapsed on the basis of lack of proper arrangement of things in the home? The woman or the man lacks the ability of coordination. They are not coordinated. And for that reason, most homes are broken. If you've ever had such a case where a family is always fighting or a family is always quarreling or a family nearly came to the brink of collapse because this one will complain that this one is not arranging things where they are supposed to be, or this one will complain that this one is always putting things there. Well, if you've ever had such an experience before, can you type one one in a chat room? Either you know someone who has had such experience or it has happened to you before, uh, you're always quarreling with your husband or your wife. Don't you know you're supposed to put this thing here or you're quarreling with your children? Uh, just type one one in the chat room, chat room. So it's not just to the work area in the workplace that we only consider in our environment to immediate environment is important we learn to um, manage um, arrangements for optimum performance of our homes. There are so many homes that have lost their loved ones because of improper management of electrical appliances, improper management of electrical appliances. Some will iron their clothes and leave the iron red hot just close to the door and someone will come and trap it and then you see burn. 
Okay. Then you see, um, I've, I've actually seen a case where people, someone, when I say consciously, unconsciously, plugged a, an electric boiler and forgot it there. And the thing was red hot, was burning the, the, the rug where they kept it. All right. So these things are, are not just for workplaces only. They also affect us in our house. Uh, they also affect us in our house. Uh, let, let, let me ask you. Um, I know it, it happened to me in well, when I was growing up. Um, some of us had those 40, or we didn't know that the boilers were 40. And then uh, you put water and you try to use your hand to dip into the water to find out whether the, the water was hot. And, and all of a sudden, you receive a very good electrical shock <laughs> that you, you never wanted to boil water again. Uh, if you ever had such an experience, please type zero zero in the chat room. Uh, type zero zero in the chat room. You, when you were growing up or at any point in your life, you experience such. Or even if it's not electric iron, maybe your, sorry, uh, electric boiler, it could be your electric iron. Okay, you never knew it was having an issue and you, you try to test it with your hand and you received a very good shock. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask this question now. Uh, for those of us in my country, um, some of us could have had such a thing. You have been disturbed by NEPA. Those days that we used to have NEPA, you were disturbed by NEPA so much as regards to NEPA bill that you now became a NEPA staff yourself. How do I mean? You now disconnected your wire and you had uh, a ladder or you had a stick that used to connect your wire. When you hear that NEPA people are coming up, you quickly go, rush home and remove it. Take your wire to the backyard. When NEPA goes, you reconnect your light and continue. If you've ever had such experience before, please type one word in the chat room. <laughs> you, 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 you were once an unofficial NEPA staff for your family, <laughs> okay? <laughs> <laughs> but do you know that now we could be smiling because all of those things were near misses. We didn't get, we didn't die. But do you know that there are uh, a good number of people that die uh, daily on such, such events? Okay, there are a good number of people that die daily on such risk events. So we have to be very careful on, on uh, how we manage our work areas. Very, very important. Then the next one, there is the tools. Choose the appropriate tools carefully. Check the feet. Uh, make sure the tools match the task. Then environment, take corrective actions to make environment suitable. Adjust lightning, noise, and temperature when possible. Check workplace and check work processes. Uh, for work techniques and habits, improve uh, work techniques and habits, improve postures, and check work techniques. Quickly, did you know there are third party safety experts that can perform an evaluation case in management sus uh, suspect, uh, in a case management suspect a hazard uh, condition is present in the workplace or just have a question of concern. So where um, your company has an issue of safety concern, please feel free to get to consultant, safety consultant, of which some of them are going to be emerging from this class, and that will help. Considerations for EHS inspections. The following are a few key examples of what to look for in inspections. Are, uh, we look out for indoor air quality, fire protection and life safety compliance, housekeeping practices, equipment operation and maintenance practices, safe on safe conditions and on safe acts. Now for the indoor air quality, um, indoor air quality problems include those caused by um, uh, mold or asbestos or by improperly operating uh, HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Then we'll have the protection and life safety compliance. Um, the protocols to be followed to address items such as fire, fighting equipment, exit signs, and exit pathways should be checked the fire marshal will report any code violation. You should get a copy of the report every time uh, they inspect your site. Housekeeping practices may refer to items such as facility cleanliness, 
proper storage of materials and supplies and related activities. Then equipment and, and operation uh, maintenance practices ensure that safety guards or safety devices on machines, equipment, ETC are not removed or modified in any way. Inspect and uh, ensure that everyone follows the manufacturer's recommended guidelines or procedures or safety standards always when using machinery um, equipment and so on. Disabling a safety device is strictly prohibited. Our safe conditions include sleep, trip, and fall hazards, electrical hazards, or any condition that can cause injury. They may also include environmental systems such as uh, lightning temperatures and sound levels. On safe arts and practices, uh, when conducting your inspections, observe employees performing their job tasks. Are they following proper work procedures, obeying safety rules, um, wearing required PPE? PPE means pro uh, personal protective equipment, using ladders instead of chairs. If not, it needs to be noted and reported. So on safe arts or practices, uh, result when there, uh, there is a deviation from standards of operation. Okay, when there is deviation from rules and regulations, then there is um, an unsafe act there. Quickly, let's look at uh, EHS inspectors. Anyone performing inspections should be trained on how to conduct those inspections. The following people can become EHS inspectors and uh, can conduct inspections of the workplace. The employees when trained can conduct supervisors, safety coordinators, management, safety committee members, outside vendors or insurance companies. For EHS inspectors, daily all employees should make a visual inspection of their workplace prior to beginning work. Supervisors, safety coordinators and management personnel as part of their daily work routine should make continuous visual inspections and take corrective action to address any unsafe act or unsafe conditions observed. Safety coordinators, management personnel, and or safety committee members may inspect workplaces, accident scenes, and so on when necessary. Outside partners such as state fire marshal may, may inspect work site as well as um, other state agencies such as Office of Risk Management. Quickly, let's look at the EHS management plan. An EHS management plan is an integral part of the overall safety and uh, loss control program in every business. It is important for effective management of an accident incident uh, to minimize uh, losses to people, to property, both in and around the facility. Now quickly, let's look at the types of uh, EHS management plan. Uh, we'll have the on-site plan and we'll have the off-site plan. For the on-site plan for incidents which could affect people and the environment inside the work only. So we use an on-site plan to be with that. For off-site plan, for incidents which could affect people and the environment outside the work as well. So we use the off-site plan. Quickly, let's look at the elements of EHS plan. One, reliable and early dictation of uh, risks and careful planning. And uh, we have uh, command coordination and organized structure with efficient trained personnel. Then we have required so resources for handling risks and emergencies. Then we have appropriate hazard response actions, effective notification and communication facilities, proper training of consigned personnel, regular mock drill and rehearsals, regular review and updating of plans. Looking at the elements of EHS management, um, it should include emergency equipment, office safety, fire safety, hazardous materials, uh, safety, electrical safety, storage uh, method, environment safety. It's not just limited to DICs, but this could be major components. For emergency equipment, availability of other items uh, like defibrillators, spill kits, eye wash stations, body wash stations, um, then we have, uh, is the first aid kit visible and accessible properly scared, um, stock? Uh, remove any product that have expired from the first aid kit. Uh, now, uh, you check for availability of appropriate um, medicine in first aid kit. If, you're, if there should be medicine in your first aid kit, please, it should be approved by uh, your um, company doctor or nurse, all right?
Then for office safety, fire escape route uh, blocked. That should be a concern. Also, we should ensure that uh, a fire, es a fire uh, escape route, fire escape route should be accessible and open when there is, when there is an emergency, okay? Poor housekeeping with combustible materials and trip hazards scattered throughout the place. It, the, that's also a hazard in the office place. This is both a dangerous situation and a violation of fire safety code. Both fire escape route blocked and poor housekeeping, they are dangerous situations and violation of fire safety code. Exit door blocked, uh, tripping hazard and uh, lighting features not covered, they are all hazards associated with office risks. Now, when it comes to fire safety, is the firefighting equipment inspected, serviced, and ready for use in the event of emergency? Security or someone that lives close and on 24 hour call if fire department doesn't have a, 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 a copy, check if elevator emergency keys are properly stored in a place that is secure and accessible at all times. I want to ask a question here. How many of us have ever, maybe you went to buy fuel or you went to a bank or you went to a, you went to a hotel and um, unconsciously you checked uh, the extinguisher there, and you find out that the extinguisher is older than the, the 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 place you came to. Like the extinguisher, the last date it was service is older than the company itself. Have you ever experienced such? Maybe you went to buy fuel, and all of a sudden you say, you "Let you check." You find out that four, five years, ten years, that extinguisher has not been been serviced. Now, automatically, that extinguisher is no longer a safety tool. It's now a hazardous tool. Some times ago, I was working with USC Nigeria and uh, I was working in the production department. So I had this um, uh, general fire extinguisher. And since I came to that company, there was no day uh, we had um, um, any safety expert coming to renew it or what. I, I think they basically did it. Uh, they basically have the safety extinguisher to meet up with fire safety rules, okay? So one of the days there was fire outbreak, the oven caught fire, the inside of the oven caught fire. And uh, for the first time, we, we've never been trained on safety before. We don't know what is safety, but we just know that somehow, somehow, while we are doing chemistry in school, we were taught that we can use fire extinguisher to fight fire. So one of my colleagues went and carried the general purpose extinguisher and open the oven. As soon as he fired the extinguisher towards the oven, the fire multiplied. The fire engulfed a large population of the, a large portion of the oven, okay, that everybody had to run out. It was after the whole incident was calmed down that we now started checking the extinguisher. We found out that that extinguisher is as old as that plant. So what's the essence? If we want to be safe, Let's do all things to remain safe. Um, please, for all the questions I'm seeing in the chat room, please make sure you have all your questions ready. I will answer all the questions um, in the Q and A session. All right. Okay. Check service stack for details of last inspection. Check uh, that the uh, safety pin is in place and secure. Check to see that the host has not rotted or the nozzle has not clogged uh, for extinguishers that are stored outdoors. Please, when you go to organizations, feel free to check their extinguishers and please feel free to tell them the consequences of not servicing the extinguisher. Okay, I was, uh, uh, I was in a, a particular bank some times ago. I'm fond of doing that. When I enter a bank, I will virtually go around and check their Extinguish as though they are paying me to do that. I'm just being conscious of the fact that the place they are, if it gets fire, get, gets um, fire outbreak, there will, will be several damage. So it's just um, an attitude to me that whenever I enter a bank or whenever I enter a filling station, I will literally come down and check your extinguisher. Okay. And one of these days, I, I entered a bank and I checked the extinguisher. I found out that the extinguisher was about two months old. Like the last, it was supposed to be serviced two months ago. And I called the attention of the operations manager. 
and he called the attention of the service manager. And uh, the operations manager was like, he never knew that the extinguisher was, uh, was expired. Service manager said they didn't tell him, his boys didn't tell him. So he called his boys and he told them, remove all the extinguishers now and call the people to service it. And um, that was earlier this year. Now, um, sometimes last week or last two weeks, I found myself in that same bank. I trust what I should be doing. I went back to the extinguisher and I checked. It was well serviced and I, I love that. You might have done that out of um, not knowing really the implication, but by doing so, you would have helped save lives and properties. And what even made me check their fire extinguisher was that I saw on their notice board that they had a fire certificate, fire safety audit certificate. They had fire safety for 2020. They've already been certified as safety compliant, fire safety compliant. Meanwhile, their extinguisher is, um, is not serviced. So I, need to, I needed to call their attention and they were quite impressed. Okay, I went to a filling station, I saw such, and I made a recommendation. Uh, I went back to the filling station, I checked the this thing, they've, they've, removed, they've removed that place that they used to write um, uh, expiring the last service and next service, they've removed it. So you don't even know. Uh, they, they're actually thinking that they are wise. But just about um, in the same state, uh, last year or last two years, there was a situation that about three filling stations on the same line caught fire. One caught fire and extended it to the other spontaneously. Three of them in the same line caught fire. But if they had safety consciousness, fire safety consciousness, by ensuring that their uh, extinguishers were well serviced, they would have reduced such risk. So please feel free to tell, um, tell them including those hotels that we go to. Including those hotels we go to, please call the attention to it, okay? It's not just to meet all requirements. It's about saving lives and properties. Now have the hazardous uh, material safety. The containers must be properly labeled. Make sure that the containers are located in a no smoking area and everyone follows this rule. Check the containers uh, of hazardous materials to ensure there are no leaks, okay? For electrical safety, overloading outlets is dangerous. Please, overloading outlets is dangerous. And please don't become your own electrical engineer. Get an electrical engineer to, to do the wiring or the electrical connections in your house or in your office. It's very important. There are different sizes of wire for different purposes. Uh, don't go and use the wrong size for a, uh, a heavy duty uh, machine. You always be having your office burnt, the wires burnt every day. And you'll be wondering what's happening. So overloading of outlets, please, is not good. Look for ground connection uh, removed or damaged connections. Okay, so if, if there are ground connections uh, that have been removed or damaged, please find them. They are all hazards on themselves. Uh, and should there be need to get an electrical engineer to run an electrical safety audit in your workplace, please do so. And please let me categorically say here that you're a safety manager or safety professional does not mean that you are by default a, a jack of all trade. If they call electrical audit, they call you. Uh, mechanical audit, safety audit, they call you. Health safety audit, they call you. Food safety, no, no, no. You have to specialize in an area. If you want to specialize in auditing the banking sector, uh, you specialize there. If it is internal controls, if it is systems auditing, if it is um, stress management, occupational hazard, whichever area you find your strength in, focus in that. Your in safety is so diverse that you can't just um, think of becoming everything at once. All right, and that's why. Uh, some people tell you they have done HS1, 2, 3. Yes, you could do HS1, 2, 3 and still be irrelevant because you are trying to do everything at once. Anybody that teaches you that as a safety professional, you should be a firefighter. You should be a first aider. You should be a, a, a an safety electrical auditor. You should be operations auditor. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. You can be a safety supervisor. That's right. You can supervise an electrical team to do their audit and give you a report. 
You can be a safety supervisor in any field at all, having gone through the safety trainings. But that shouldn't, that you have level one, two, three certificate or that you have senior certificate does not empower you to become everything. Supervision is different from being all around the uh, auditor. All right, I, I guess we are understanding this. All right, that is very important. Please, safety officers shouldn't do everything. No. Safety officers, safety officers, especially safety supervisors, their role is to manage those that are doing those work. Please, don't go and expose yourself to areas you don't have the technical ability to handle. It can result to uh, deaths. Okay. Outlets and switch plates, uh, plates not covered. Um, Panel buses not labeled correctly. Any hot uh, spot, uh, are buses closed or covered properly? Extension cords used in permanent capacity. All of these things should be checked, okay? Then storage method, do not over clutter storage areas. Do not store water in electrical or mechanical rooms. Uh, check for poor, unacceptable housekeeping practices. Are storage areas cluttered? If yes, please. Make sure that they are decluttered. Are uh, items overhanging from the shelf, uh, heavier or larger items stored above shoulder um, height, please be mindful of that to uh, avoid collapse. Uh, larger buses stacked on top of smaller buses, also check that to avoid collapse. Then for envir environment safety, is area properly lighted for emergency use? Are there any overgrown bushes that someone could hide behind? Is lightning adequate from building to parking areas. Please, for those of us that are lovers of uh, trees, uh, please be careful of the distance between the tree and the residential areas and office areas. Because if you are fond of, um, like some of us that have um, cash crops uh, in our houses, every day you're changing your, your zinc when the when there is a heavy blow of wind one of the branches could leave and then scatter things so be mindful of the distance you keep if you are in those category of people that always love planting trees around the house you can go back tomorrow or monday and do a safety audit environmental safety audit and make sure that the trees that are not needed you cut them off okay the trees that are not needed you, and the ones that need pruning, especially the flowers that need pruning, please prune them appropriately. Environment and safety inspection. Uh, one of the best ways to identify potentially fatal or harmful uh, things is to conduct work, workplace inspection. Once these things have been identified, they can be properly addressed. Unsafe acts that are observed should be addressed as should or safe conditions. Accidents are a disruption to daily operations and this in turn reduces operational efficiency. It is very important therefore that inspection should be a vital part of your safety program. Tip, you can also use a system level approach to managing EHS uh, risks. There are four elements common to general systems theory which are input processes, output and feedback. Inspection help to maintain a safe work environment, control on safe acts and conditions, ensure operational efficiency. Now quickly, let's look at types of inspections as we begin to uh, round up. We we'll have the formal daily or weekly, and then we we'll have the special uh, um, function. For the formal um, inspections, they are those that are scheduled in advance. They may include the safety officer and safety committee members. Then you have the daily, uh, all employees are required to conduct informal visual inspections of their workplace or work areas prior to beginning operations daily. Supervisors should continuously monitor. Now, please, I need you to listen to this very carefully. Number two is basically the, the function of safety officers or safety supervisors. What is their work? To continuously monitor work areas for developing hazard and unsafe practices. To continuously monitor and uh, or, or monitor work areas. So in essence, the, the work of safety officers or safety supervisors 
is to ensure that there is no emergence of risks. How do you do that? By ensuring that the people working in those environments that you're supervising are well aware, well aware of the risk involvement, all the hazards in that environment, and then educate them on all that is needed. Sometimes you need the, need, the help of this, this uh, uh, departmental head of that particular um, uh, department that you want to supervise. So let's assume that you want to supervise uh the the let's take for instance uh facility maintenance office you need the help of the facility maintenance officer to know all the risks they identify then you also have a brainstorming session with them as to understanding those risks and then profiling solutions then coming up with the job safety instructions that will guide them if it is a hotel you will need the help of the employees there to find out what are the job uh, hazards they are facing. Then you also think uh, alongside with them on the job safety instructions that can help them. All right, so your work essentially is to stop or eliminate or reduce the emergence of hazard, be it new or old. And you have to work with the people who are constantly facing those risks or, or who are constantly doing those tasks to find out what those, um, uh, emergent risks could look like, all right? So this is very, very important. Then the special fun um, special uh, function inspections um, are conducted after accidents and upon the introduction of new equipment or new procedures. They may be conducted by other regulatory agencies. Now, what do we inspect? You inspect the entire workplace, you inspect the interior and the exterior work environment. For the entire workplace, the entire workplace here means all buildings or structures that must be inspected. So if you have building that um, you can divide into several di uh, different inspections, then all the different inspections must be completed to receive credit for that inspection. For example, a five-story building, um, each story has, a, has an inspection form. Then it is critical that the inspection is completed and the inspection form for each story is duly filled for inspection to be counted as completed. All the five inspections together count as one uh, building inspection for that structure. Then for the interior and the exterior, when looking at the inside operations, don't forget to check work areas, work as, um, areas accessible to the public, storage areas, maintenance areas, and equipment uh, rooms. Open lock doors and check. Checklist of uh, inspection categories. The list given below is a checklist of the various ins um, categories of um, inspection to be carried out. Building safety, office safety, fire safety, electrical safety, emergency, emergency equipment, and uh, storage methods. Inspection documentation. Inspection documentation. It is important to have a checklist for the inspection. A checklist can be departmental or site specific. It's best, uh, it's best to take uh, a basic form and tailor it to your site and needs. For those of us that be going to safety class, um, we'll be providing most of those forms and then um, in your own office, you can know how to tailor it to your own use. Site specific form is highly recommended over a departmental form, specific form, specific form fits a specific building and have, uh, would have no categories that are not applicable to that building. The written inspection report should uh, include people or perhaps person, that's the name of the person inspecting and identifying the hazard, date, uh, the date the inspection was carried out and hazard identified, then concise identified as to description and exact location of the hazard, Building and area inspected uh, should be included. Then corrective actions also should be included. Now quickly, let's look at strategies for EHS management. It is important to develop and implement um, um, EHS control strategies to increase quality and productivity. Once the risk factor and their causes are identified, EHS control strategies can be implemented based on needs. The flow EHS control strategies can be used to increase safety in an organization. We have the engineering controls, we have administrative controls, 
who have personal protective equipment. For the engineering controls, uh, they include replacing the equipment with safer models and removing unsafe equipment from the work area. Use appropriate initial design of the workstation or work area. Improve the design of the existing work area equipment. Provide necessary equipment and accessories. Adjust the workstation layout and uh, equipment. For administrative controls, um, they include restricting access to hazardous areas, the use of signs to communicate information, uh, ensuring site security and uh, employee training. It also includes improving safety through the written policies and procedures by the management. Train workers in work methods, vary or rotate work tasks, limit extended work hours, and then provide uh, mini breaks. For personal uh, protective equipment, when PPE is used, uh, employees must be trained in issues and they must be monitored to ensure that they, they are using it properly. Uh, there should be a written program on how to purchase, use, maintain, store, dispose, and replace PPEs. PPE acts as a barrier between a person and the hazard. PPE is only appropriate in, in situations where engineering or uh, administrative controls cannot be implemented. Because of time, I'm going to skip through this uh, case study so that we can round up. But please, when you get your material, kindly go through um, the case study. It's very, very important. Now quickly, look at the management processes, EHS management processes. The following are the key steps of EHS management process. Policy, um, organizing, planning and implementing, measuring performance, um, auditing and reviewing performance. I will also have to skip, um, I just have um, just a few minutes to round up. Policy, organizing, planning and implementing, measuring performance, auditing and reviewing performance. Okay, uh, for the sake of time, I will encourage us to go through our materials and then we'll get them and that will help. Did you know that economics is an applied science that coordinates the design of devices, systems, and physical working conditions with the capacities and requirements of the worker? General safety rules, safety tips to follow while lifting and uh, moving to avoid injury, examine the load for grease, oil, moisture, or sharp edges, plan your path to make sure it's free of obstructions, squat down and straddle the load somewhat and bend your knees. Grasp the object firmly to make sure your grip uh, won't slip. Lift with your legs, slowly straightening them. Avoid jerky motions. Turn your feet instead of twisting your back. General safety rules shoot up for safety. Know how to use, your, use the proper PPE for your job and make sure um, you inspect and maintain it regularly. For use of personal protective equipment, depending on the job at hand, you may need um, safety goggles or glasses, work gloves, hard hat, safety shoes, rubber boots uh, for walking around electricity, earplugs or protectors, face shield, face mask or respirators. For emergency evacuation, evacuation of the building may be required if an emergency situation threatens the life or safety of the employees. Some examples of our situations that may require evacuation of fire or smoke, chemical spills, bomb threat, violence, power failure, and terrorist attacks. If there is an emergency, proceed to the nearest exit. Do not stop to pick up personal property. After exiting building, proceed to the assigned outside the evacuation area. The emergency coordinator should verify all employees uh, are accounted for. The emergency coordinator should notify the manager on the status of the employees. For improving your EHS management, after the inspection has been completed, you have to decide the action that needs to be taken to improve your existing EHS management processes. Also, you should duly fill, sign, and date the inspection form. If a hazard was found, then make sure that it is properly recorded and uh, reported to the appropriate people. Both unsafe conditions and unsafe acts should be corrected as soon as possible. Sometimes corrective action can take place immediately, and other times, can be drawn out over a period of time. You can discuss the unsafe acts uh, uh, practiced by the employees in the next safety meeting that you have in your organization. To improve your EHS management, um, let there be correct 
uh, or perhaps correct unsafe conditions and correct unsafe acts. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about them. Every act that does not meet with the standard rules of operations in a workplace dies an unsafe act. And any condition that does not meet with the standard working conditions is an unsafe condition, all right? Now in the EHS circle, we have what we uh, call plan, do, check, act. Plan, do, check, act. So EHS is a continuous circle of interdependent activities that have to be performed on a continuous basis of planning, doing, checking, and acting, planning, doing, checking, and acting, planning, doing, checking, and acting. The content of the final audit report should be depending on the case contain the following elements, audit objective, audit scope, particulars of the audit form, identification of members of the audit team, uh, dates of audit, uh, identification of element and area to be audited. Now, as we round up effective, um, effective um, environment, health and safety program, one, there should be management and employee buy-in, there should be worksite analysis, there should be hazard um, prevention and control, and there should be safety and health training. My class is supposed to be stopped by eight uh, before questions and answers, and this is 8.01. So permit me to take my bow from here as I welcome the coordinator. Please, coordinator, can we take every other thing within the next 10 minutes? By 8.10, can we round up and uh, have uh, to go and rest? Thank you so much for having All me right. here. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Banito. It's always an insightful time with you. We thank God. Please, do we, do we have anyone that have questions? There are questions in the chat room. I will read them through. And um, Adeko Yalu Atosin has been raising his or her hands. Mohamed Adamu has been raising his or her hands. So I will unmute uh, Mohamed Adamu. Mohamed Adamu, you are unmuted. Hello, Mohamed Adamu. Please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, okay. Mohamed Adamu is not here, okay. Richard Asha Asante. Mr. Richard. You can unmute yourself now. You have been unmuted from here. Mr. Okay, Richard. Yeah, yeah, good evening. Yeah, yes, good, good, evening. good evening, Mr. Richard. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, my question is, I want to know the consequences if we did not service in the fire extinguisher, what the risks involve with it? So, sorry, can you come again? As I want to know the consequence or the risks involving the uh, if fire extinguisher did not service. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank God you're learning with your baby. Okay, so a, a, a risk number one, if you did not service your fire extinguisher, uh, the, the, the gas inside or the extinguishing agent inside gets to become weak. So that instead of fighting the fire, it becomes an igniter to the fire. Secondly, dependent on the temperature of where, your, of your, of where you are storing it, it can lead to explosion. Gas, if you are storing them in a in a place um, that is not too comfortable, it can lead to explosion, and it can that explosion can cause a heart attack. It can cause a unnecessary crisis, an emergency. All right, and there are other um, consequences as well when it comes to regulatory uh, meeting regulatory standards. If you did not service your fire extinguisher and fire service department comes to check for your organization and you're not compliant, they will, they will charge you, you'll pay regulatory fines, okay? And where they notice that you are completely unsafe, they can lock up or seal up your work environment in when you become compliant by getting the safety certificate for your organization, all right? So there are so many reasons, but I think I can, so many consequences, but I think I can stop here for now. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, thank you, sir. The next person is, uh... Mr. Solomon, Mr. Solomon, you have been unmuted. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, Mr. Fomeka Solomon. Uh, my question is, 
Yes, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, my investigate an incident on a site. How do I investigate an incident on a site? Sorry, can you come again? Your line steps to follow and how to go about it. Your line, line is breaking, sir. Yeah, I'm asking, how do I investigate? Yeah, hello, can you hear me, sir? Yes, please, go ahead. Yeah, my question is, how do I investigate an incident on a site? I mean, how do I go about it? How do I start and how do I end it? It's only incidents I'm hearing. You say, how do you investigate dash and incident? The incident on a site. Okay, on I, a site, there is yes. something that is missing there, but let me answer. I think... The question is basically how do you uh, do uh, uh, incident investigation on a site in yes, a simple, sir. Yes, sir. A simple yeah. sentence? How do you do incident investigation? Okay, so if you are doing incident investigation, um, number one, you must first of all understand your work, the scope of your work. So you must list all your tasks in your work. Then you must identify all the possible hazards um that could result to certain incidences and then identify all the proposed incidences that those hazards can cause and then uh, put up control to those incidences i'll repeat that again first identify the scope of your work by by how do you do that by writing down all the tasks that are being carried out on your site now from each of the tasks identify the hazards that are attached or that are possibly going to be emanated from each of the tasks, all right? Then you can now um, write down the incidences that those hazards can cause. Then from there, you can put up a control to those incidences, all right? I think um, that's in simple way, um, incidents investigation in a site, all right, okay. But we have a course on incidents investigation uh, in uh, safety in HSE. So maybe you could get more insight when we get there. All right. Thank you so much. Yes. The next person right. is uh, Mr. Jaffet Ake. Mr. Jaffet Ake, you have been unmuted. Please uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. Mr. Jaffet, uh, Jephta Ake. Mr. Jephthah, all right, okay. Um, uh, the next one is Mr. John Arua. John Arua. John Arua, if you can hear me, please unmute yourself, all right. Okay. Good evening, sir. You're, good, you're welcome, sir. Okay. My name is Arua John Essen. You're welcome, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear my you name go. is Zara. Okay, my question is: What are the PPEs that are that are required for people working where there is a radiation source, mm -hmm. and the risk involved? Where or because many people are living closer to mass, and we heard that there is a radiation source. What are the risk involved there for we that are for people that are working where there is a radiation? Uh, radioactive source. So what are the PPEs that are required? Because we know that there's a uh, there's risk there. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. The way you're talking like you're, 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 <laughs> you're afraid of the risk. Okay. Um, I'm going to answer your question, but I'm not going to, I'm not answering it because I'm a radiation safety expert. I'm going to give you a general safety answer to that. But if you need much um, um, insight on that, please, we recommend that, that you get a, um, a radiation safety expert. There are safety experts that focus on radiation, and they will give you much more guide on that. But on general safety notes, radiations generally cause cancer, uh, bone cancer, OK? Um, and radiations also cause um, other, um, radiations can cause birth defects. So it can cause hormonal imbalances um, in the body, all right? And uh, there, are, there are other 
uh, consequences of uh, radiation as to affecting the brain cells. Okay, please note, I'm giving you general safety um, answer. Now, question of how do you manage radiation? Uh, or which PPEs can you use to manage radiation? For those of us in the radiation industry, please, it's important. Um, as I continue, please, the attendance form will be shared now by the coordinator. Uh, please kindly fill the attendance form. The coordinator will fill the attendance, they will submit the attendance form now in the chat room, please. Um, kindly fill the, if you've not filled the attendance today, please kindly fill the attendance form. If you fill the attendance before, please, there is no need of filling the attendance form. And let me say officially, let me say officially that this class is over. Um, if you feel your attendance, you can go and rest. So we can just take maybe like extra five minutes and answer those that their questions are still in the chat room. But if you don't have questions and you 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 are done with today's class, today's class is done. Thank you so much. So back to the radiation uh, question. Which PPEs do we need for radiation? Please, I will also recommend that you visit um, a radiation expert so that they can give you uh, an, uh, a breakdown of the radiation safety handbook. I think that will guide uh, you uh, quite much. This class does not necessarily focus on radiation uh, safety, but it is. It, it does not mean that it's not a part of safety. It's a, a major part of safety. And uh, I will advise you meet a radiation safety expert to, or, or you can Google radiation safety handbook either from OSHA or from IIRSM or from SHRM, uh, you can get those things and then you find out more about it. But I must admit that I'm not a radiation safety expert so that I will not give you information on what I don't have much knowledge about. Uh, please, Mr. John, I trust you will bear with me. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. Although uh, right, no, there are some questions in the chat room, like I'm yeah, seeing okay. from Nelson uh, okay. Febu, Ali, you said lead sheets for radiation pro, lead sheet for radiation protection. Okay. Good evening, sir. Yes, good evening, sir. So maybe if uh, Mr. Nelson is a radiation safety expert, please, you can chat him more privately and you people can discuss more. All right. Okay, please go ahead, sir. Mr. Jephtha. Hey, good evening, sir. Thank you, sir. We spoke about the uh, fire extinguisher. Yes, please. Putting off, uh, using it to put off a uh, fire. Okay. If I may ask, what are the elements that uh, make up uh, fire, and uh, how can someone reduce those elements to extinguish the fire? Okay. So you are asking me a question now. Fire safety. There is a there is a class for fire safety in HSC. But I'm going to also give you a the tip of the iceberg on that. Fire is made up of uh, three basic elements. There is oxygen, there is heat, and there is fuel source. Okay. Um, and there are primarily three ways to fight fire. So you can fight fire by starvation, which is removing of the fuel from the fire block or you can fight fire by smoldering, which is removing of the oxygen from the fire block, or you can fight fire by, by cooling, which is application of water to the fire block. So why using uh, extinguisher? There are different kinds of extinguisher. There are several of them. We we'll just have a few that we'll talk about in, this, in the fire extinguisher class or fire safety class, but there are so many of them. You have the all uh, general purpose, um, or what we call the ABC fire extinguisher, uh, which fights all classes of fire. All right. Then you have um, um, the carbon monoxide uh, extinguisher, which fights gaseous fire. Okay. Then you have um, foams, like pressurized uh, water foam that is used for cooling. All right. So to, to basically fight fire, you have to understand the block or the triangle of fire and know which extinguisher to use per time. So like I said, we have heat source, uh, what, what they call the other one? Oxygen, 
and then we have um, um, heat source, oxygen, and fuel. So the kind of fuel present should determine the kind of extinguisher you should use per time. All right. So in the fire safety class, we'll deal more with uh, fire extinction, and then we'll deal more with uh, fire extinguishers and different classes of fire and how to deal with that. Okay, Mr. Jephthah, does that make sense to you for now? Does it make small sense to you? Please, if it makes sense to you, kindly tell me in the chat room. All right, can we take the last question for tonight? It is all right, sir. Uh, we have a question from Inena Chukuigui. And it says, is there any external regulatory bodies that ensure offices follow the safety measure or it's just a trained personnel? Is there, there, external, the, the, there, is are, there, there are external safety, there are external safety uh, regulatory bodies. Like in Nigeria, we have external regulatory safety bodies from local government to the federal level, okay? In Nigeria, we have, I don't know whether the person asking the question is in Nigeria. In Nigeria, we have the fire safety department and their work actually is part of, regulation is part of their work, ensuring that um, companies meet up with the fire safety compliance law. And uh, by default, if you, if you go to some banks actually and go to some major organizations like major uh, hospitals or major hotels, you will see them display their certificate of safety, uh, fire safety compliance. That's to tell you that they are they are regularly audited by the fire safety department. Okay, so there are, there, are, there are regulatory bodies uh, that do so. All right. Okay. All right. Let, maybe one more, sir. Okay. This one is from Ojeni Paul. Okay. It says, "What are the things?" to check on fire extinguishers and how to check, how do we check it? Okay, what are the things to check on fire extinguisher and how do we check it? The first yes. thing you check on your fire extinguisher is to check, um, one, check whether the check uh, whether the service is still in order. Okay, so check the date of service, if the, the gas is still in order. Then secondly, before you take the extinguisher to fire, please check the activity of the extinguisher inside. How do you do that? You, there is an acronym called PASS. Please, can we help uh, put the attendance link again? Some people are calling for attendance. Um, check, use the acronym PASS to, to check uh, the activity. The, the PASS is that you pull the pin. Every extinguisher has a pin. So pull the pin and then uh, before you go well, aiming at the, at the fire, please check the activity by trying to squeeze the triggers and see uh, the pressure that is available. If you test it and there is nothing coming out, or maybe instead of flushing out, it's now coming up like a uh, muko. Please, that gas, that extinguisher is, um, is gone. Okay, that, don't, don't, go, don't bother using it. And some gauge is good. You check the gauge also, but sometimes the gauge, some of the gauges they put are not working. So the best way to check your thing is after checking the service is to test before taking it to the fire. Okay, <clears throat> I, I guess your question did not. Uh, did your question cover how do you use a extinguisher? Uh, no, just to check. Okay, so how do we check it? Uh -huh. So I've told yeah. you how to check it. Thank God your question did not cover how to fight fire. Uh, maybe when we we'll get to fire safety class, we'll look at how to fight fire. All right. Thank you, sir. That is all for tonight. Okay. I think we can. I'm see, I'm, can we take this, uh, Nelson? Can we take Nelson Afebu? I think his hand has been up. Let's take Nelson Afebu. Uh, okay. And then we can say good night to everyone from here. Mr. Nelson, you have been unmuted. Please go ahead and ask okay. a question. Okay. Thank you very much. It's been a very wonderful day. But I. Uh, no. Doctor, I want to ask, are there certain conditions? Because you spoke about uh, safety devices that they should never be tampered with. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Are there, yes, yes, yes. Certain, are there certain conditions where it is, you, the only way you can do that job is to disable that safety device? Why I'm saying okay. this, why I'm asking this question, uh, if you look at, uh, if you study the Piper Alpha uh, incident that happened right. in the North Sea some years back. That's right, that's right. Part of the reason why they couldn't put out that fire 
divers were below the rig walking and they had to turn off the automatic suction pumps that take water into the uh, uh, fire, the water hoses that for the fire extinguishers to use. So they had to turn those off because they start, when the process alarm triggers, they suck water automatically and they may suck in those divers along. So they have to. So my question is, are there any conditions where you are allowed to be able to? Okay, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I'm hearing some radio noise from the background, so I've muted everybody. All right, um, your question as to is there a condition as to when there could be, uh, when uh, uh, a safety device can be disabled? Uh, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. But this kind of information must be communicated during safety trainings or safety drill. Please, Mr. Afebu, I would like your mic to be open so that um, you can also respond if you're okay with the answer. During safety drills, every, every safety supervisor should know the conditions where certain things can be maneuvered. So during safety drills, this kind of information should be communicated to the safety operators or to those going for safety assignment, okay, such that if such a thing happen or such um, accident uh, or risk happen, then they can know what to do. All right. So it's important the communication is made. Um, this this question uh, will be handled more when we look at um, confined space management in level three and contractor HSE because these are special cases that we see in confined space management and contractor HSE. So if like I said, the answer to your question is yes, but before it becomes yes, it must be well communicated during safety trainings and safety drills to those uh, involved in those safety uh, activities or safety um, uh, assignment. All right. Okay. I What I said, did it make sense in any way? Very well, sir. Very All well. All right, sir. Thank you so Thank much. You, I, I appreciate it. All right, so uh, please, coordinator, can we now go and sleep? Yes, sir. We can uh, call it a day from here. Thank All you right. so much, Dr. Banito. You have been so wonderful. And uh, we pray that the Lord will uphold you more in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so thank you very uh, much. All right, thank you so much. So for those that have not been able to sign attendance, please, is there anyone here who has not been able to sign attendance? Please, if you've not signed attendance, can you raise your hand up? Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Oludulako. You have been doing a great work today. <laughs> if you're having issue, please check your browser. If you're using a browser that is not allowing to sign your form, please change your browser. You can copy your form and send it to another WhatsApp number or send it to another contact and then fill it from the uh, fill it from the phone. You can send it to your wife or send it to your husband or send it to your son or send it to your colleague, whichever one. All right. Please, is there anyone here who has not subscribed to the YouTube channel? Is there anyone here who has not subscribed to the YouTube channel? Please, if you've not subscribed to the YouTube channel, can you type one one in the chat room? Um, so that um, we get you the link. It's important that everyone get to subscribe to the YouTube search that if you miss any class or you're, you're, you get locked out by network or uh, any contingency, you can easily find where you stopped. So please, I just posted the link. So in case you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so now. Please do so now. Please do so now. Subscribe to YouTube now. Uh, so just um, open the link and uh, click on subscribe. That's all you need to do. And then you get to have automatic uh, updates on each of the classes and what have you. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Um, I think we can close the class now. Um, we, are, we, are, we will just allow for five minutes and then um, We'll close the class. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Joseph. 
uh, with all your busy schedules, you were able to make this day a worthwhile for all of us. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the faculty members that did very great work today. Thank you, um, all the coordinators. You have been wonderful. Thank you. And do enjoy a wonderful evening. See us tomorrow, please. Our class tomorrow starts by 2.30 p.m. 2.30 p.m. 2.30 p.m. So please, let's um, get to be around. Tomorrow we'll be handling introduction to project management. And that will be an explosive class. So please be on ground so that you understand how to apply project management to your business or to your career. Thank you.